Hello and welcome to the session, Environment Talk, Wildlife and Conservation conducted by the Wildlife Conservation Foundation Program in short WCS. This is a highly immersive program, HIP outreach activity organized by the English language panel of SMK Unku Aziz Sabah Bernam. My name is Joshua Kumar, and I will be the moderator for this workshop. Before we get started, I'm going to go through some rules to ensure all of us benefit from this online workshop. Firstly, keep all your mic on mute throughout the session and unmute if our speakers request for responses. Next, if you wish to ask questions, please click the raise hand icon. We also have an open chat feature enabled. You can type out your questions and comments in this chat box. Keep in mind that the attendance via Google link will be posted in the chat box towards the end of our session. Two attendance links will be posted one for teachers and the other for students. Fill in the correct attendance form toward, uh, toward, um, at the end of our session. Now, before we begin with our speakers, let us view the Of a world where wild tigers are more than memories and shouts and torrent. And I dream the elephant's ivory to rise on him more than 
The mission of Wildlife Conservation Society Education is to inspire a diverse, inclusive movement of conservation advocates. WCS aims to engage students using a multi multidisciplinary approach to appreciate and care for their environment. This is done by encouraging students to use the medium of English language via activities that encourage active listening, writing, comprehension, and creativity to explore environmental issues and engage in problem solving. This empowers students to take action through awareness raising, information sharing, and giving them the skills to make informed and responsible decisions. In today's session, we will listen to a talk on focal species and participate in some fun activities prepared by WCS. Our speakers for today are Mr. John, sorry, Mr. Joshua Juan Pandong, Orangutan Unit Coordinator, and his assistant, Ms. Sylvia Ng Foyen. They are from Kuching, Sarawak. Welcome, Mr. Joshua. Welcome, Ms. Sylvia. We are so glad you could be here today to share with us on wildlife and conversation, sorry, and conservation. Okay, Mr. Joshua, Ms. Sylvia, the session is all yours. Thank you very much, Mr. Joshua as well. Uh, all right, so my name is Sylvia, as uh, Bigu Joshua mentioned, and I'm from the Wildlife Conservation Society. So let us start with a little, what do you call it? A little um, poll or survey. Okay, you can see the link to the survey in your uh, chat, and I'm going to put it up here as well. Okay. All right. So, what is your favorite animal? Please fill in. Please fill in. Uh, what is your favorite animal? Okay, so um, Josh, what is your favorite animal, Joshua Juan? Me? I have a, a soft spot for orangutan, <laughs> which I will be sharing about shortly. Okay, I like, I don't actually have a favorite animal though. Okay, so let's look at it. Wow, okay. A lot of people say dog, cat. Yes, cats are definitely adorable. Um, lots and lots of animals here. Okay, so we'll give you another minute to fill in. Oh, there's even a... Is that a... That's a really, really slow animal. All right, lots and lots of people putting in their favorite animal. Okay. All right, you can continue adding in as many animals as you want. Yes, I can see lots of rabbits and cats. Pandas are also a favorite. So, all right, I'm going to shift to my presentation. You can continue to fill in that uh, survey as much as you like. What is your favorite animal? But I will be moving on to the my presentation for today. Okay, I would like to start with introducing WCS um, as a whole. Okay, let's start. Let's present this. Present. Okay, you can see our presentation. It's loading. Ah, all right, it's up. That's lovely. Okay, so our presentation, our talk today is about wildlife and conservation. So WCS mission as a whole, WC, what the Wildlife Conservation Society is, not only in Malaysia, 
is actually all around the world. And our headquarters is actually in New York. So our mission is to save wildlife and wild places. As you can see, we do this through what we're doing now, education and inspiring people. Because what we envision is a, is a world where wildlife thrives, where people and wildlife live together in harmony. So what we want to do is conserve as many places for wildlife and wild places. Okay, so we work in 16 priority regions. You can see that here we are in Southeast Asian, the Southeast Asian archipelago, all the way from the Arctic, Beringia, all the way down to Patagonia, all the way to the Melanesia. Melanesia are the Fiji Islands, Samoa. Samoa is where the rock is from. Okay, for those of you who like movies. Okay, so there are six variety species that WCS uh, focuses on. And in Malaysia, we focus on the big apes. The big cats, elephants, and shark and whale. Okay, so these are places where we have living collections. Uh, the Central Park Zoo, Queen Zoo, Prospect Park Zoo, the New York Aquarium, and our headquarters, the Bronx Zoo. So if we were to go to New York to see our the big bosses, we'd head over to the Bronx Zoo because that's where all the all WCS um, staff are working, most of them. Okay. So I'm going to start off, I'll be presenting on tigers and sharks and anyway. Okay. So tigers, there are six. Okay, my numbering is a bit off. Apologies on that. So there are six um, subspecies of tigers in the world. Unfortunately, the South China tiger has not been observed in the wild since the 1980s. And there is a possibility that it might be extinct. Usually they wait for 50 years of no sighting before they declare a species extinct. Okay? So it's only been, to, um, well, it's about 50 years. So we'll wait for news on that. But right now, there's six subspecies. Okay? And there are actually three that have already gone extinct. The Javan, the Javan tiger, which was found on uh, the island of Java in Indonesia. The Bali tiger, which is found in Bali and the Caspian tiger, which is found in Europe. Okay, those three are no longer around. So, if you look at these tigers, how would you identify them? If you want to guess, take a guess. You can share it on the messages or you can just think about it. Um, the answer is actually here in this video. All right, let's watch this video. And is it going to play? Hold on, yes. Ah, okay. Playing. Slowly. Apologies for the technical issues. Okay, there we go. All right, let's. Give it some time, think back on the tigers that we saw and think about how you would identify them. Okay.
Okay, do you guys manage to see the video? Uh, blank, uh, black, blank is it? Yeah. All right, let's try this again. So it's still this one, yeah? Hmm. Yeah. Not oh dear. Okay. Okay. Okay, let's try this. Okay. Yeah, it takes a bit. All right. Okay, this is interesting. Still not loading. Oh yeah. Ah, all right, there we go. Okay, can we see the video now? Okay. Yeah. All right. So now do you know how to identify tigers? Yes. What do you use to identify them? You identify them using the stripes, isn't it? Okay. If you look at this, the adult male one, you can see that his stripe, the stripe are the same the stripe patterns are the same even though they were found in different places and different years all right 
The same with adult male too. Okay. So let's move on. So. Tigers need to eat, right? What do they eat? Meat. Do they buy, go to the supermarket and buy meat? Can't. No. <laughs> they can't. <laughs> they don't have money, right? So what do they do? They hunt, right? Mm. So you, this, the animal that you see there, can you identify what animal this is? It's a deer. It's a deer. It's a barking. Yes, it's a barking deer. It actually sounds like a dog in the forest. It literally barks. That's right. It's a deer. But tigers also eat other animals such as wild boar, uh, monkeys sometimes if they're on the ground. All right. And for one tiger, if you see there's only one tiger. So one tiger will eat about 60 to 70 deer in a year. 60 to 70 deer. That's a lot, right? So, to make sure he has that 60 to 70 deer in a year, he will have to eat all. This will have to be how many deers there are in the forest so that he can have that 70 deer in a year. It's like you rare chicken, right? If you only have 10 chicken, you eat 10 chicken. If you eat a chicken a week, you only have chicken for 10 weeks. But if you have a hundred chicken and you only take one chicken out at a time, you have chicken to eat all the time, right? Okay, the same idea. So, in order to conserve tigers, we have to conserve animals like deer as well. We need to protect animals like deer, like wild boar, so that our tigers will have enough food to eat. Now, to do that, you need a really big space. If you don't have enough space, Right? So you need to protect a lot of space. Look after tigers. All right? So this is where we work in Pahang and in Johor. This is called the Enda Rompin landscape. If you look at the Enda Rompin National Park, it is only the shaded figure. The green is uh, forested areas in Pahang and the blue are forested areas in Johor. It's a big space. About as big as Singapore, maybe, or more. Okay, so... What does WCS do to conserve tigers? Well, we do research. That's why we have, uh, we have all these pictures. Uh, these pictures are from camera traps. We put cameras in the forest that automatically take the picture of um, animals that walk by. Okay? Then later on, we go and collect the images. Then we know what animals are there. And then we also uh, work to do uh, enforcement. We, we cannot catch them because we are not the uh, government. We're not the police, we're not uh, Perhilitan, we're not Jabatan Perhutanan or the Johor National Park um, Services. What we can do is we can do patrols and then we can report to them when there are cases. We also uh, run joint patrols with all these other government agencies and we also um, help them to, or join with them to organize roadblocks into the national park. Okay. So why are tigers important? Just not to eat deer, right? But what happens when there are no tigers in the forest and then the deers all happy, happy, they start to breed and they become more and more deer. What happens? Okay, take a look at this place. This is a samba deer um, enclosure in a conservation house. It's a conservation center. They they keep animals that have been uh, surrendered to them for relief or for education. Now, this is the deer enclosure. If you look inside the enclosure, what color is it? You see any grass, any living trees in the, inside the enclosure? No. No. No, right? You only see it outside. What happens is that the deer will start to eat everything because they're grazers. Even if you feed them enough food, they'll still want to chew on things. And so what they did is that they, they ate all the grass and they killed all the trees, even the large trees. Because when the deers have antlers, 
and they'll rub against the tree. When they rub against the tree, they kill off the bark and then the tree dies. Is it good to have only deer in the forest? It's not a good idea, right? Yes. Mm. So we need tigers to look after the population of deer in the forest. Okay. So let's go move to the next one. We don't have that much time, so we'll try to maximize what we have. So we'll look in sharks and rays. Now, let's say again, everybody gets a piece of paper and a pen or pencil. Okay. I'll count to 10. I'm sure you should have all these things with you. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, now I'll give you one minute. Look around you, identify, and write down the name, not the number, the name of the items made out of plastic that you see. Uh, for instance, the mouth is made out of plastic. Okay. So start writing down. I'll give you one minute. Later on, we'll see how this connects to what we talk about for sharks and rays. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Right in the um okay. So while I'm talking about sharks and rays, you can write down how many items that you saw made out of plastic in the chat. All right. So use the chat and write down how many things that you saw made out of plastic. Wow, 23. That's a lot of stuff. So continue filling in the chat while I present. Okay, it's okay if you, you can't identify that many. All right. So let's talk about sharks and rays. Now, sharks and rays are cartilaginous fish. What, are, what is cartilage? Okay, if you touch your ear, your ear is um, soft, right? And then there's this hard thing in your ear. So that's cartilage. It's a soft bone. Shark and rays don't have those hard, sharp bones that you find in other fish. All, all their bones are made out of the same hard thing in your ear. Okay, so that's why they're called cartilaginous fish. They grow slowly and they mature late, and they have very few young. Um, usually they have about up to 40 young in, on average, every time they have, uh, they breed or they give birth or they lay eggs, about 40 only. And how many will grow to adulthood, we don't know. They usually will start to reproduce or have babies quite late in life, some of them to up to two years old. And then the Greenland shark, which, which lives at the poles, that particular shark takes up to 50 years to be sexually reproductive. Okay? They can be found in every ocean, and they are the top predators. While there are 633 species of rays and 500 species of sharks all over the world, in Malaysia, we have much fewer. Um, let me see if I can remember the exact number. Um, I can't remember the exact number and I didn't write it down. But so far in our work, we have seen about 30 plus species of sharks and 30 plus species of rays being sold at market to be eaten. Mm. So, are sharks man eaters? True or false? False. False? Okay. False. Some people say false. Actually, quite a lot of people say false. Mm. 
a lot of the movies tells us it's true, isn't it? But it's not, right? Most um there are only three species of shark that actually have been um found to kill people or attack people. Okay. The great white shark, the bull shark, and the tiger shark. But it's very rare for them to attack people, and they actually people are scarier than sharks. Okay. Our humongous shark, the we have the largest shark in the world that swims in our waters. It is the whale shark. It's the largest shark in the world. It goes about 20 meters long. That's, if you do the 100 meter screen, there's like one fifth of it. Okay. They eat plankton. Plankton is like all the tiny, tiny things inside the ocean. Okay. So more sharks are killed by humans compared to humans killed by sharks. If you see the number of sharks here, these are the number of sharks killed by humans per minute. But this is the number of people killed by sharks in a year. A lot of difference, isn't it? So, if you look at all those baskets there, most of them have either sharks or rays in it. It's quite sad, isn't it? Some of them are really, really small. Okay? Sharks kill fewer than 20 people, but between 20 and 100 million sharks die each year due to fishing. So one of the threats that sharks face is actually over-harvesting. Because remember, sharks have very few babies, and they only have babies quite late. So if you go and catch all the little sharks, you're not going to have any sharks left to have babies, right? Scary, isn't it? And that is actually one of the issues with um, a lot of fishing industries all over the world. Not only for sharks, but for other fish as well. And then what else uh, do sharks face? This, in this um, newspaper article, they found a shark carcass, real shark carcass floating off the Pula Pankor. It had plastic in its stomach. So, another issue that, um, another threat that um, sharks and rays face are actually uh, plastic. It's not just the big pieces of plastic, you know. Plastic will break down the environment to tiny, tiny pieces. Can you imagine swallowing all that tiny pieces of plastic or eating it? I wonder how much chemicals have already attached itself to the plastic when you eat when they eat it. Hmm. It's not only plastic pollution, yeah, it's also chemical pollution. Things like heavy metal, things like agrochemical. These a lot of these end up in our waterways. Either through uh, rainfall, it gets washed off the crops, or from industrial waste that gets um maybe accidentally it goes into the river. As sharks, shark fin actually has 10 times the levels of mercury, which is actually heavy metal, which is bad for you, that's allowable um, for human consumption. In it. Mm. So what does WCS do? One of the things that we're doing is that we're doing research and we're also doing education work, which like what we're doing with you now. Research for us, because we don't know where the sharks are found in Sarawak. So what we do is that we go to the market, we identify the individuals, what species they are, and we measure them and we see where, how, how old they are, whether they're reproducing, whether they have babies, whether they're still a baby themselves. Okay. So here are some of the sharks that we've seen. Um, if you look at the really colorful one, there's a wobbegong. And I think the other one is a, I can't remember now, it's just either a white tip. No, it's, it's a white tip. All right, so why are sharks and rays important? Now, like tigers, sharks are top predators. When, I, when, race, when we say meso predators for rays, they are like secondary consumers. They're not top predators, but they still eat other things. They're like the smaller predators. Okay, so without the sharks to control the smaller predators, we don't have, we won't have the smaller fish to eat and the, um, the crustaceans like the crab because if there are no sharks, if let's say we take out the sharks, 
then this group will become more and more and they'll eat all these little little ones then you have your your prawns will get eaten your crabs will get eaten uh, so then you have less to eat then fishermen have less less to catch and when these all the smaller ones run out the big ones will die off too and you have much less fish in the ocean it doesn't just affect things in the ocean it also affects people who rely on the ocean for their food all right so predators are really important yeah so that's the end of mine so if you want to learn more or see more of things that we um, share information that we share you can come to our instagram uh, page or our facebook page okay so let's come to our first our okay our second activity okay okay let's play this now what adjective would you use for a tiger? Fill in the poll. Remember the one that we did just now? Hold on, let me find the... Ah, here. This is the link to the word cloud. Let me share the link again. Okay. I'll give you a couple of minutes. Um, fill in what adjective you would use for tigers. Would you think they're scary? Um, do you think they're beautiful? So, let us know what you think about tigers. Okay. Wow, brave. Yeah, tigers are kind of brave, aren't they? Okay. Oh, yes, I forgot to mention just now. A lot of you mentioned that uh, you see a lot of plastic things in the ocean. Uh, it's a lot of plastic things, right, in your house. So, how does this affect um, sharks and rays? In many cases, the things that affect sharks and rays the most, uh, and other marine life as well in the ocean, the type of waste, solid waste, is actually plastic. Uh, usually paper will break down, glass will be ground down back into sand, metals will start to corrode, but plastic doesn't decompose. So let's be more responsible on how we use plastic, especially those single-use plastics, uh, how we dispose of them, how we use them. Uh, plastics are everywhere in our clothes. Even my shirt is made out of plastic, which is why it's so hot. Um, we have cups, we have even things that we use for in the medical field, things like casts, um, even our for our pencil refills, they're all plastics. So you have to really think about how we use all these things. You guys can continue filling in the adjectives that you would use for a tiger, and I will pass this time to Joshua. Joshua from WCS. Hello, can you hear me sir? Yeah, okay. Hi everyone. Good afternoon students and teachers. Uh, firstly, on behalf of WCS team, again, we wish to thank the English language panel of our SMK and Kuazis for inviting us now to give an environmental talk. Uh, for my slot will be, I'll be sharing if, let me start sharing. Uh, uh, it's called a window. Okay, I hope you can see the presentation, yeah? Can you see? Yeah. Okay, I, let me try that. All right, so uh, my name is Joshua Pandong, uh, the team leader for the Orangutan Unit within WCS Malaysia, based here in Kuching. Uh, in fact, I'm not here on my own. I also have Lucy with me. Lucy is our orangutan mascot. I hope you can see the, I can't see the screen at the moment. I'm sharing screen. Uh, Lucy says hi. Uh, 
So the picture on this slide is an alpha male orangutan named George uh, when he was still in Semangoh Wildlife Center, another uh, uh, one of the rehab center that we have here in Kuching. Uh, he has been since relocated to Matang Wildlife Center after his big fight with another alpha male uh, named Richie. Uh, on this slide, I put George's eyes looking into the words of uh, wildlife and conservation, which is our theme for environmental talk today. Uh, next slide. Uh, where are the great apes found? So Sylvia showed earlier the overall uh, presence of uh, WCS globally. Uh, and I used the same map to show where are the other great apes. So we have the gorillas and chimpanzees. They are mainly found in this part of Africa on the, the, the red squares. Uh, as for the orangutans, they are only found on the island of Sumatra and Borneo. Thus, they are named uh, Sumatran orangutan and Bornean orangutans. Most, more recently, scientists identified a third species named uh, Tapanuli orangutan, which is uh, found in the island of Sumatra as well. Yeah? Uh, what do we know about orangutans? They, they are, they, their pregnancy period is uh, almost human-like between eight to nine months. So they carry, uh, the moms carry their baby in their tummy for about eight to nine months. One baby are born in each birth. Next pregnancy is eight years later. Can you imagine that? That's a very long gap uh, to wait for a baby brother or a baby sister. Uh, age of first pregnancy, which means um, uh, a female orangutan is ready to be pregnant and give birth at the age of between 11 to 15 years old. That's a very long time as well, uh, almost human-like. And they live up to 30 to 35 years uh, in the wild, uh, in captivity, if they are kept in good health by the zoos or uh, the captive centers, uh, they live longer, up to more than 50 years, uh, one of the records for the longest living orangutan, uh, I think she died now, uh, Ameng from Singapore Zoo. What else do we know? They tend to uh, live uh, alone, uh, but they do move large distances. Uh, they do not have territories. Uh, males have uh, cheek pads, meaning uh, you saw from the first slide earlier, they have these uh, cheek pads to show that they are the alpha. Uh, so they fight a lot. Uh, they share about 97% uh, DNA with humans. I actually forgot to mention this is a picture of a mother orangutan and her infant. Uh, they just finished a meal and about to wander off. Uh, this is taken in Simango. So, uh, yes. Next slide. So why are orangutans uh, important? Firstly, they are the gardeners. They disperse seeds. Uh, in fact, when they eat uh, fruits, they are they, because earlier we learned that they travel long distances. So they drop the seeds uh, in other areas where they, uh, after feeding in one area, they move to another area to look for food. So they disperse seeds to another area. Next, they are doctors as well. Did you know that they? are the ones who maintain a healthy forest by allowing sunlight to penetrate forest floor. So uh, I'll show you another picture uh, later whereby orangutans, one of their ecological function is to break, not just to break branches, but to mend, uh, abandon uh, tree branches and make them into nests. So by doing that to large uh, branches, they actually provide light uh, to penetrate to the forest floor and maintain a healthy forest. They are engineers. They build nests every day. Again, another uh, photo shortly to show how does uh, an orangutan nest look like. Uh, they build very, very uh, delicate nests. In fact, if it is a fresh nest, new nest, if you stand under it, uh, and in the rain, it'll be your umbrella. 
waterproof. Uh, they are an opera singer. Uh, I describe them as an opera singer. They make long calls, uh, beautiful uh, calls, not to say beautiful, um, because only males make those calls, uh, but it's a very deep bass. Um, and when, when, when they call it uh, from the valley, it just echo uh, around the landscape. So uh, that's, that's how I describe them. Legend, this is an interesting one. Um, according to legend, orangutan save Ibans from extinction because uh, for pregnant mothers to deliver babies, they had to cut them up, cut them open to deliver the babies. And of course, the mom will not survive um, that operation or surgery until uh, one day a hunter met an orangutan who taught him and showed him, demonstrated how you use ginger called lia jenang to uh, massage and massage it around the tummy and uh, uh, giving birth naturally. So that's uh, one of the legend uh, has it. So where are the orangutans found? That is the question that my colleagues and I are asking. Our job is to find out where orangutans are and protect their homes. As you can see here, the island of Borneo, the few sites where we study orangutans are actually quite small compared to the whole island. But over the last century, over the last century, we have seen more than 75% decline in orangutan habitats. Uh, most were lost due to expansion of uh, land development for economic reasons. Uh, this is 2013 and it has shrunk greatly. So what is the big deal is the question of the day. Uh, this is a GIF image of an attempt to rescue an orangutan. Uh, it was stranded after a section of the forest was burned down to make way for all palm estate in East Kalimantan. Uh, the men here, uh, I think there's a replay. Yep, the, the men here are attempting to tranquilize her are using blow darts. So uh, you can see the instrument that they are using. You can find this if you Google orangutan um, uh, East Kalimantan. Uh, they're not trying to kill her. Uh, it's just to try to rescue and translocate. So what was happening um, to their homes? Uh, what happens when a forest is lost? Food sources are destroyed, especially for the orangutans. Uh, not just them, but other wildlife that depend on fruits uh, as their main diet as well. Orangutans are displaced uh, from their homes, as we as we saw in that short shift, uh, and they had to some have to move to towards non-suitable habitats, meaning it is not their natural home. Uh, forest loss uh, earlier means trees are being cut down. Habitat degradation here refers to original forests are no longer there as plantations such as oil palm estate or um, other plantation expands into the homes of orangutans, yeah? surrounding them and cause fragmentation. So forests now exist in patches. In the picture on the right here, we see the forest patches are disconnected from other forest patches by the expanding oil palm as far as the eye can see. So what are the effects of uh, um, if orangutans were to go extinct? Forests will not be healthy, and if they are not healthy, we are not healthy. Why? Because environmental health, wildlife health, and human health are all interconnected. They depend on each other. Uh, look at COVID-19 pandemic, how the coronavirus disrupted all our lives. Yeah, so we are all connected. Uh, no seeds dispersed because on top of being an architect, orangutans are also gardeners of the forest, as we learned earlier. No seeds dispersed means no fruit trees, no food for animals. Ultimately, perhaps an entire young generation will lose an iconic species. So uh, why do we want to conserve um, orangutans? So this is us uh, in the, our team during surveys outside of protected areas. Uh, our research teams recorded signs of uh, orangutan using uh, what are technical orangutan nest count surveys to estimate uh, while uh, orangutans finding out their numbers and uh, find out where they are and to have those areas protected. And once we identify the areas, we, we look at who are the, the residents or the villagers around there 
we train them to be defenders to protect the house, the, the homes of orangutans. We partner uh, with, with everyone to save wildlife together, be it primary school or secondary school, like SMK Unku Aziz, uh, all of you today. Playing your part does not only mean you have to know how to travel in the jungle to look for orangutans, like what Sylvia and I are doing. It can be as simple as uh, using your talent, such as in photography, as we can see on top of the picture over here. It's actually a competition uh, uh, at a primary school level. The photos that they took was in very impressive. Uh, you can use arts or drama uh, yes, in the middle picture, or you can even use uh, speaking English, like our hip activity today, to raise awareness about the importance of orangutans and wildlife being nature's defenders using your talents yeah so that's the the first bit uh, that i i share the second i would like to move on to uh, asian elephants uh, so you where are the asian elephants found in peninsula malaysia uh, i attach here a series of maps uh, to show the area of uh, forest cover between 1954 and 2000 just to show how the areas, uh, forest, forested areas have shrunk. In 1954, there were 9.5 million hectares and slowly over time, up to the year 2000, it has now shrunk to 6 million hectares or even less today, as shown in this map. Uh, uh, over on the left, it is the elephant distribution in red dots uh, over areas that are forest reserve and protected areas. Uh, I zoom in on the southern states of Pahang and Johor to show that that is where currently WCS projects are located. So Sylvia showed the areas uh, in her slide for tigers earlier. What do we know about Asian elephants? Uh, I'd like to share a story while you watch this video. Um, at one time, there was uh, it was raining at that time. We were installing um camera traps on the way back to the vehicle we noticed potholes uh, i thought what was this what was this about huh? um, and until i realized actually that was a herd of elephant just passed through us like 15 minutes before we passed through that area so we had a close almost a close encounter with elephants what i wanted to say of, about that encounter was when they walk in the jungle, you would think that it will be a thump uh, uh, and the grounds are shaking, but actually they are a gentle giant. They, they walk very, very silently. In fact, sometimes you won't notice that they are there. Uh, so I'm here. What do we know about Asian elephants? They are the gentle giant of Asia. That's, that would be a very good uh, description. Uh, one baby is born, uh, one baby elephant is born in each birth. Their next pregnancy is between four to six years, and the age of first pregnancy is between 10 to 16 years. That's, that's also a long time. Uh -huh. And gestation period is between 18 to 22 months. That's uh, the longest for a uh, uh, land mammal recorded. So what do we know about Asian elephants? They, they, they walk in herds. They, they, go, they walk through the forest in herds, and the herd consists of uh, related females and calves uh, led by a matriarch, meaning a, a mum. Uh, calves are cared by related females and uh, female calves stay with maternal herd for the rest of their lives. Interesting. Uh, male elephants, uh, they, they do go with the herd, but they leave them once they reach puberty. And they tend to live in isolation in smaller uh, bachelor groups, meaning between the uh, all the single men, uh, single guys. Uh, what are the threats to our elephants? Um, firstly, it is poaching and international or illegal wildlife trade. Uh, on our side, we we support enforcement through reducing poaching pressure. Uh, villagers are trained to conduct community-led patrols. Uh, we identify. Uh, we allow citizen to report any on wildlife crime hotline, uh, and we encourage people to avoid consuming or using wildlife derivative products because that will harm them as well. Uh, next, habitat loss and fragmentation. Uh, we 
we create awareness on environmental issues. We provide feedback to government strategies to improve uh, this uh, protection. Uh, 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 there are a lot of things that um, have been done. Uh, follow, do follow. Uh, at this point, I'll say do follow us on Facebook. Uh, I may zoom through my slides. I may not have enough time to explain all. I'd just like to say that um, there are human elephant conflict going on in some of the areas. Um, there is a need to continue to conduct education and awareness program to encourage the communities uh, uh, to, to take up steps that instead of harming the elephants, uh, we promote them to use siren fences uh, whereby they would walk the elephants, if they trigger a siren fence, uh, it would trigger a very loud noise and the villagers will come and, and um, chew the elephants away so as not to harm them. Uh, so I've come now to call for action. Actually, another thing I wanted to show in this picture is the nest of uh, orangutan that built every evening. Um, so that's that's the if you look over here instead of uh, breaking the branch they actually just bent it. Uh, firstly, I'll like we, uh, well personally we do encourage you to dream big, keep your dream alive because you are all young, uh, you have uh, a whole life ahead of you. Start your your journey before you go into the outside of school, the world outside of school by uh, dreaming. Uh, you dream big, uh, as in you. what do you want to see the world uh, look like? And then uh, we encourage you to speak for our life. Like, like today, we are telling our story. We hope that you will stand up uh, and speak for our life and tell your story. Uh, we encourage you to go out, gain great ideas, learn new skills, and apply them to save our life. That's why you go to school and uh, universities uh, after this. Live a green lifestyle and support other people who are doing it as well. And do enjoy the great outdoors because by being outside, you see that uh, even during this COVID time, we're just thankful just by being outside and uh, appreciate nature. Again, uh, these are the great apps saying thank you. And that's it uh, on my side. Oh, over to you, sir. Hi, Josh. Thanks. Um, interesting, isn't it? Um, abibos, predators, they're all important in our forest and they're all important to us. Okay, so we end our talk here, but it doesn't end our journey with conservation and with wildlife. It doesn't end for you either. You can always go and check it out um, on the internet or ask or talk to your friends about it, all right? Um, we have also actually prepared a, let me see, a Google form that you can fill in uh, about what you learned today to let us know whether you learned, um, whether the information we gave was actually received by you and to tell us what you like, uh, which animal you like best. All right. So do fill in the form and we pass the time now back to uh, Tegu Joshua. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Joshua and Ms. Sylvia, for the informative session. It has, uh, it has certainly sparked awareness on the importance of caring for wildlife and conservation. Uh, on behalf of the teachers and students of SMK and Aziz, we thank you once again, uh, Mr. Joshua, Ms. Sylvia from WCS. Uh, we actually enjoyed the workshop. And if, it's, if it is possible, can we see Lucy a bit? Oh, <laughs> okay. Okay, we have now come to the end of our uh, session for today. Uh, teachers and students, please fill in the attendance link if you haven't done so yet. Thank you, everyone. Take care and stay safe. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, teachers and all students. Thank you, Thank you for having us. Thank you very much. All the you best in your studies, you everyone. Thank you. Thank you, both of you. Take care. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.
we would love to give you uh, again for other workshops. Is it possible? Yes, um, definitely. Okay, we'll discuss the next workshop. Yeah, thank you very much. All uh, right. Stay safe, stay good, Joshua. You too, take care. Thank you. Thank you, take care. Bye, everyone. Bye.